We all know that feeling of getting excited for a game and it not being that great, and a lot of the time it's due to overselling, overpromising, or overpromoting. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 20 overhyped games that flopped. Starting at number 20, it's Assassin's Creed Unity. Now, this is a game that had a lot of potential. It took place during the French Revolution. It was marketed to the point of parody, pretty much. Where at Comic-Con, they had a big parkour display set up with Assassin's Creed Unity logos all over it. Oh, the assassins. Look at them go. It was high-level 2014 marketing. And wow, the game was broken. It was just flat-out broken. At launch, it had so many game-breaking bugs, it was hilarious. The game did sell well, but it created such a bad stir that they A, had to give away their first DLC for free, B, gave a free download of Black Flag, The Crew, Far Cry 4, Just Dance, Rayman Legends, or Watch Dogs to everybody who bought season passes, and still nobody was happy. Moving on to number 19, Duke Nukem Forever is a game that was in development, well, forever. It began development in 1997 and was finally released in 2011. It basically had to be pried out of the cold dead hands of 3D Realms, the developers of the original Duke Nukem 3D, and essentially a brand of the company that made all of the original Duke Nukem games, with Gearbox actually sort of doing a hostile takeover of it, which was partially facilitated by 2K Games. Now, I don't want to endorse anything that happened during the course of that, because some of it sounds pretty not great to me. But Gearbox made a really bad game. To be completely fair, it was basically finishing a game that had been in development hell for god knows how long, whose developer had gradually imploded over the course of about a decade. But wow, it is not good. And if you remember all of the turmoil surrounding this game, there was always sort of an air of mystique. However, it is just absolutely dashed when you play the game. It sold itself as a big blockbuster dumb shooter, basically, and wasn't even that. It was just like a hodgepodge of nonsense that didn't look very good. Number 18 is Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. After Sonic Heroes came out, Sega decided they were going to go into this mode where we're gonna do something different. And, uh, well, they probably shouldn't have done that. Sonic Heroes was generally well received. I personally didn't love it, but compared to what they did with this game, it was Mozart. Sonic 2006 decided to be a serious version of Sonic Adventure, and it was the wrong target to aim for, and they didn't know what they were doing. Also, they split the dev team about halfway through to work on another game, which was also bad, Sonic and the Secret Rings, and ended up rushing the last half of the development with a smaller team. Also, hey, if you've ever wanted to see Sonic the Hedgehog fall in love with a human, this is the place to go for that, because it's the only time it's ever happened, and it's because no one liked it. Why did no one like it? Because it was super weird. And to be truthful, if that was the worst thing about the game, I think people would have been fine, but everything about the game is bad. The camera, the controls, the graphics, the levels, everything. It's so bad. Moving on to number 17, 007 Legends is a game that probably didn't need to exist. However, it formed a nice big hype train off of being a commemorative title of the 50 years of the Bond franchise. What that meant is they decided that they would show off a bunch of different areas from different eras and different movies with different actors and altogether the thing just never comes together and I wonder why I can't just figure out why it never feels like one thing. Oh, maybe it's the concept of the game. It was built on Eurocom's attempt to remake GoldenEye 007 which was generally regarded as a good job, but the project itself was just too big in scale and just never felt like a full thing. This is a game that did basically nothing to keep you interested over the course of an extended play. At number 16, SimCity was being billed as a brand new reboot of the series that would incorporate social elements and make it into an overall big cool experience that Maxis developers actually at one point called like an MMO. Instead, it was basically a game that could mostly be played in single player and didn't need to be always online, but was always online and the servers were down for like a week and you couldn't even play the game for the first few days it was out. As in, couldn't play it at all. SimCity was such an unmitigated disaster, it's hard to describe it in its full breadth, but there hasn't been a game in that franchise since. And no, I don't count SimCity Build It as a game because it's pared down and bad. Although Maxis is technically still a studio, they've been dead for a long time. Moving on to number 15, hey, do you remember when Evolve was going to be the next big thing? 
Like it literally had the next big thing as one of the players and it's asynchronous monster versus team multiplayer. Yeah, Evolve was gonna be really cool. I remember how big it was gonna be. I personally really remember how many times we were told it was gonna be super fun and super innovative, but hi, that didn't happen. In reality, it was kind of clunky and bad. Asymmetrical wasn't really a good thing if used to describe that game. And other games have done it way better. And it showed that this was not something people would pay for. It moved over to a free-to-play model and failed as that too. Because the things that you plan on making money doing, you just give away. Because I don't know. Let's just go ahead and say like the business model behind this game was bad and the game wasn't good enough to justify it. Moving on to 14, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly was another Spyro game after the trilogy. It wasn't developed by the original developers, and it was hyped to be the next Spyro game, and at that point, people really liked Spyro games. If you've played the Reignited trilogy, it's, I mean, a great game franchise, and probably the peak of the Collectathon games. This basically build itself as the next thing, but it wasn't developed by Insomniac or by people who seemed to really care about anything that people liked about Spyro, just that people liked Spyro, because it was basically just this horrifically uninspired game that didn't try anything new and coasted. It did bad. Number 13 is Aliens Colonial Marines. The first Sega Aliens game we thought this was going to be at least interesting, and it wasn't. I mean, it was an Aliens first-person shooter. It had single-handedly inspired most of the tropes we see in sci-fi shooters today, and it didn't even kind of live up to any of the games that had used some of its well-worn paths. Everything is mindless. Everything is just there. To call what the enemies are operating under artificial intelligence would be a massive exaggeration, and in most ways, you could just regard it as a failure. At number 12, The War Z. Oh, The War Z. What it is basically just a ripoff of the DayZ Arma mod. If you're familiar with DayZ or any of that kind of game, The War Z was just, it was just biting on that. It had money behind it, a nice big investment, and it managed to garner a bunch of hype, but it offered nothing new and nothing special. And it just basically banked on DayZ, acting like since people knew what it was, they definitely needed something that wasn't a mod and was a full game. Nobody needed it. Number 11 is Dino Crisis. Three, not one, not two, three. Cause hey, you remember how the first two were actually good despite being very different games? Yeah, let's make a third one, set it way into the future on a spaceship and have it make no sense at all. On top of that, you should have the worst camera system imaginable. How many games of this era were just ruined by the camera system being horrific? It's not a small number, but this game really took the cake. Dino Crisis was a series that has fans, like, to this day. I'm one of them. I liked the original quite a bit. I thought it was a really great development from Resident Evil, and what is this? I still don't know. Coming in at number 10 is APB. I don't know if you remember when they originally announced this, but plans for the game go back to even 2005. David Jones, the creator of Grand Theft Auto, Lemmings, and Crackdown, wanted to create something that combined everything from all of the games that he had made over the years and hyped it as the culmination of all of his experience. They spent over a hundred million dollars making this game, and it basically hollowed the company out. The game being a multiplayer third-person open world game without servers didn't really last. It was acquired and rebranded as APB, reloaded as it was relaunched, and it's still going today, but it's, eh, it's pretty crap. Moving on to number nine, Lair, a game that I barely remember, but can kind of vaguely remember, was this game that was marketed heavily on its very beautiful graphics, and to be frank, for the time, it actually did have pretty good graphics, but that's about it. It had probably some of the clunkiest controls I can remember, and for a game that uses six axis to do air battles, that's not what you want to hear. In fact, you really just don't want to hear a game uses the six axis to do air battles. Yeah, dragon games are really cool, but almost none of them have really worked out. And even the best ones, the original Panzer Dragoon games, are like cult success at best. It's a shame because, I mean, they're awesome. But it's this kind of game that I think is probably the reason why. No one wants to try these types of games. Stuff like Lair just makes it look bad. Number eight is Overkill's The Walking Dead. Hey, remember how big that was going to be? Remember how cool it looked? Like, kind of like a Left 4 Dead that was set in The Walking Dead's universe? 
it wasn't even actually a bad game. It just wasn't incredible. But frankly, the problem was that it was a franchise that basically lent itself to this kind of game in a way that should have made it easy to make a good game. And it kind of just disappeared. It also had a number of technical problems and that never helps. And to be frank, even though the gunplay is good, it was also pretty repetitive. It's just a bit too much like Payday. Like, as in, it doesn't feel like a different game, it just feels like different graphics. And moving on to number seven. Hey, remember when Hayes was going to be a Halo killer? Yeah, like, so many people called it that, like, oh, this Hayes is gonna be big, it's gonna kill Halo. People aren't gonna wanna play Halo anymore after Hayes comes out. But not only did it have a bad plot, it had a very short plot and a lot of glitches. And really, like, if it had worked properly, wasn't special in any way, it was pretty generic. Like, the guy had a cool suit that was broken over his eyeball, but that was it. The cover of the game was the most unique part of it. I mean, you might criticize that it was short, but I would almost say it's a relief that it wasn't a long game. Although I'm gonna go ahead and say, like, I'm only going by what other people said. I didn't finish this game. It was bad. Number six. And now we're getting into the dark meat. Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs was originally presented as this amazing, impossible to understand how it looked so good game. And it was downgraded so significantly by the time it came out. And on top of being downgraded, the main character was really whiny, annoying, and never stopped talking about, frankly, stuff I don't care about. Just a typical doofy, brooding protagonist, except for he wore a duster and hat with his smartphone. Yeah, Watch Dogs 2 was so much better than Watch Dogs 1, and a lot of it was just because they figured out how to present the idea of Watch Dogs better, and they actually delivered graphics that they promised. Number 5 is Mighty Number no. 9, and wow, I remember when they announced this game on Kickstarter, I was like, I'm so there, I'm ready to play more Mega Man. Capcom has not handled Mega Man well, and you guys, you original team members, you absolutely positively could, couldn't you? Here, have my money skip ahead several years, and watch my Before You Buy on Mighty Number no. 9. One word, ick. It's not good, it sucks. It's so uninspired, it could easily be a bad fan game made by teenagers. And that certainly doesn't account for the good fan games made by teenagers. Mighty Number no. 9 does so little of what it originally looked like it was going to do, and you could call it a downgrade, but I don't even know if they ever actually intended to make the game look like they originally showed us. And it's slow and clunky and bad, and the new Mega Man game is so much better than Mighty Number no. 9, it just destroys it. Number 4, Fallout 76. Now, here's a game that managed to get overhyped, despite the fact everyone knew it was going to be bad. The minute they announced this game, everyone was like, mm -mm, nope. And yet they kept trying to make it seem like it could be something. They had to have spent so much money marketing this game because it was everywhere during the lead up to its release. And why? Why was it everywhere? And that's not even accounting for all the various controversies that sprung up around this game and the merchandise they did for it. Why does it exist? Why does Fallout 76 exist? Just, it should stop. Coming in at number three, the Star Wars Battlefront games. The recent ones. Now, I love the original Battlefront games, and to some extent, I even like the new ones. But it's despite so many things. The first of the two new ones was hyped as a return to one of the best franchises of all time, only to be a content bare nothing game that had good mechanics but didn't really seem to be the same game as its predecessors. Still, it was forgivable and over time they actually did make it into a pretty damn respectable game that I've wasted a lot of time on. Then the second one. Oh, we know what we did wrong with the first one. We're gonna have a campaign this time, and the multiplayer, we're going to feature some stuff that is more akin to the original. But we're also including loot boxes. Oh my god, has the business world ever screwed with a game worse than Battlefront 2? Well, it's possible. No way does anybody ever screw it up so visibly, so publicly. And here's the thing that pisses me off the most. It's again, over time, become a respectable game, but with just a tiny amount of the potential it had at the start because so many people were scared off of it. Number two is Anthem. What do I even need to say? Anthem exists. If you played Anthem, I've played Anthem and I hate it. It's terrible. It's one of the worst games to have come out to be labeled in the way that it was. New type of game that built on all the experience that Bioware had accrued over its time in making games. Instead, it's just this stale, shell of a nothing piece of crap. 
that frankly no one owes any of their time, much less money to. I don't even like talking about this game, I hate it so much. And it's partly due to the fact that it squandered time and potential away from Bioware and has set them on a path where if they don't deliver something dynamite, they're probably going to go the same way as any other EA studio they scooped up and screwed up and closed. I hate Anthem. And finally, at number one, oh, we're not done talking about Bioware. See, Anthem wouldn't be the danger that it is to one of my favorite developers through the years if it weren't for Mass Effect Andromeda, which cleared the way for a company-threatening miserable failure by being itself a miserable failure. Between the facial animation, the remarkably low-stakes story, the forgettable characters, the fact that you're kind of, I don't know, just encroaching on a bunch of people and taking stuff from them, it feels awkward, and it doesn't feel to be in the spirit of the Mass Effect series. It wasn't fun, and it kind of felt weird to do anything in it. Like you're exploiting some species that, if it were any other Mass Effect game, you'd be learning everything about and building some sort of camaraderie with them. Those days are gone, Andromeda pretty much just ate it right off. And yeah, they made the faces better and the animation a little better, but who cares? It was bad. And as a quick bonus, hey, so No Man's Sky, remember all that? That was quite the explosion, so to speak. No Man's Sky was looked at as like a life-changing game, and it turned out to be pretty standard. But we had to put it in bonus because it technically didn't flop, and also they've really made it into a respectable game in the ensuing years, and it's actually pretty great now. What was one of the games you thought was way too overhyped, especially for how it came out? Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, please click like, and if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.